Recently, I feel like a bunch of little features have rolled out into Power Apps. I kind of keep showing up here and there, but none of them have been big enough to make their own video. So I thought today what we'll do is just kind of run through all of these in one quick video, right? So we're gonna talk about like the host object, we're gonna talk about comments, we're gonna talk about having multiple editors in there, and we're even gonna talk about the little annoying change where you can't directly reference some of the objects like you used to. Sound like fun? Well, I'm going to switch over to my desktop and take a look. The first thing I thought we'd start with here is this idea of having multiple people in the app at the same time. So here you can see I mounted a really complicated app called QQQQ with some random stuff in it. And you might notice up here in the top, right, it says, look, Jennifer Hammond, if we hover over there, it says she's currently viewing the app. So what's happened here is I've shared the app, right? So me, Jennifer, and Chewy are all co-owners. And so Jennifer currently just has the app open. Now, keep in mind that as a viewer of the app, it is read-only, she can't edit the app, but she can see what's going on, she can tell what screen I'm on and things like that. So let's take a look at what the experience would be like. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over here and log in as Chewy, we're gonna say, let's edit this app. So here it goes, it's loading, and then it wants to check my data connection, so we'll say allow. And so you can see the pop-up, look, it's telling him, hey, the app is read-only uh, because someone else is editing control. When they close the app, you'll be able to edit. We can just say, got it. We can say, don't show more, but I might have to redo the demo, so we'll leave it alone for now. But if we say, got it, now we can click in here and we can see that for Chewy, it is read-only, right? So what you see here is your status, but if he hovers over me, he can see that I'm editing. And if he hovers over Jennifer, he can see that she is viewing. He can also see what screens that they are on. So as they move around in the app, he could see those things. Now, if he wanted, if you hover here and you click, he then has an option here to send me an email or chat in Teams, right? Because it's kind of evoke either one of those uh, tools. But we don't really need to contact me right here. He knows how to contact me, okay? But so Chewy's going to sit here. The yellow bar is going to be at the top the whole time. Now, if we jump over here, and if I say, hey, I'm gonna go work on screen three now, right, so I'm into screen three, and so then after a moment, it usually takes about a minute, like it's not real time, like if you've done this in Microsoft Word, where like everything is like showing up in real time, it's uh, not gonna show up that quick, but it will kind of go here in about a minute usually. And while we're waiting on that minute, like if I'm gonna go over here and I'm just going to insert a rectangle, who cares, right? So. Notice I have now changed screens and made an edit. Now, if we jump to Chewy, like I said, in a moment, it will switch and it'll show my face down here on top of this. But what's important to understand also is notice that it doesn't, like, there we go, there's my face. And if we go to screen three, notice that we don't see that rectangle that we just put there. So the reason for that is because the, like I said, the changes are not real time. What's gonna happen in just a moment is it's going to say, hey, Shane made changes, do you want to refresh to see those? So I hit pause until that happens. Actually, I'm not going to hit pause. Well, I mean, I did hit pause and I realized that I'm a dodo brain. So I could sit here forever, it's not going to update me. So the only way for Chewy to see the changes, is we go back over here, All right? So the changes that Shane's making in real time, like him moving, doesn't show up. And you can see that apparently Jennifer closed the app when I was doing this demo. You don't see those. So if I want Chewy to see my changes, I've got to go up here and save the app, right? So now I'm going to hit save, right? This is all it gives me. Remember the orange bar is kind of a cue that it's me or my pretty face over here, whichever one you want. And so as soon as it finishes saving, okay, now it's done saving. Now we're going to go over here. Okay, and so now in about a minute, it's going to tell Chewy that Shane has made changes and we'll see what that looks like. So now I'm going to pause for real. Okay, so in like 40 something seconds, um, all of a sudden we got this pop up, right? Other people have made changes to the app. You are no longer working on the latest version. You can refresh to see the latest. And so right before we hit refresh, notice their phrasing here. Other people have made changes to the app. You are no longer working on the latest version. I think this is kind of a hint that they're probably gonna eventually let us both edit the app at the same time. That's my hint or my guess though, right? I don't have any proof of that or, or if they said it, I missed it. But I, I, this to me kind of implies that they're working towards multiple editors. Anyway, so now we're gonna say refresh, and then it's gonna say, do you wanna save your changes? I don't have any changes, so we're just gonna say don't save. If Chewy did make changes while he's in read-only, he would have to do a save as. We'll look at that in just a second. But we're just gonna say don't save here. So it's gonna refresh. And now if we're jumping here, and now if we look on screen three, we would see Shane's, and of course we have the same changes, okay? So speaking of Chewy making changes, let's just have Chewy make a change. We'll have him insert a date picker on the screen. So if Chewy makes a change, remember it's read only, it's trying to tell him not to do this, but it's letting him. So now if Chewy tries to hit save, it's gonna tell you, hey, it's read only. You can either ignore your changes or save a copy. 
be careful with this, right? Like, I, you know, I, I like what they're doing here, but it is a little awkward, I think, at times. Like, I can't really imagine a world where I'd want Chewie in here watching me make changes, but he'd only see the changes when I actually hit save. But yeah, he's seeing in real time, or real time-ish, what screen I'm on. He can see that Jennifer's in here. I don't know. Like, this is one of those features that I think is interesting. I think it's building to something cooler and more exciting. But today, it's not super interesting uh, in reality. Now, there's one other thing. Oh, Jennifer left again. I don't know what Jennifer's doing. I told her just to leave it open all afternoon, but what, what do I know? Now, something else I'll show you that did happen a couple of times when I was testing. So let's go over here and let's pretend like my browser, you know, crashed, refreshed, reauthenticated, right? So I have the app open. I'm the editor. And so if I refresh, we know that like this Power Apps doesn't know that I left, right? I didn't leave cleanly. Like if I just hard close the app or hard close the browser tab. And so if I do this, it's going to be an experience like we're used to, right? So it warns me read only, uh-oh. But if you look, this app is read only because you, me, already have the editing control elsewhere. It doesn't know because I didn't cleanly close that other session. So in this case, I would just need to override. And so then now I'm back, you can see right here, I am back into an editing experience like I was expecting to be, okay? So keep that in mind. Also, if I do close out of here, so let's just say back, all right? So we're gonna leave cleanly this time as me, okay? So now that I've left cleanly, now over here, you know, Chewy's not uh, gonna know right away, but if we wait a few seconds, all right, so then after, you know, once again, it's, it's somewhere between 30 seconds and a minute usually, all right? This app is read-only. You can try taking editing control by refreshing the page. So what this is saying is that, hey, I see that Shane is not editing anymore, right? Jennifer's still in there. She's still read-only. But since, um, you know, there's no one editing, if I want to take over editing, there's not a button to do it. I would literally just have to refresh my browser. So we'll say reload. Or of course, I could have closed out properly and back in, but, you know, that would have been too much effort. We just hit refresh. And now I land in the app and I am the editor of the app, or Chewy, I should say. Chewy is now the editor of the app, right? So you can kind of in, out, in, out. And the messaging, you know, like they're not in your face pop-ups like you might have wanted, right? Like it was a pretty minor little change there, but it is worth noting, right? So let's get out of here. Here's Chewy. Um, don't save. I don't know what Chewy thinks he did, but we're not going to save. We're going to leave, right? Sometimes when you refresh, it does confuse it. And so then back over here is me. Let's open this back up and let's switch gears and talk about another feature that won't take as long, and that is this new ability to leave comments in your app. So one of the things we can do now in Power Apps is up here, in the, if we look on the top right, we've got this ability to add a comments pane, and so you can add comments wherever you want, or if you want to add them more specifically, right, if I want to be more direct, like I want to add a comment for label four, I can click on it here and say new comment. Okay, so comment would be like, you know, this is for the demo. So, it's just a way to leave comments. I, I've always kind of preferred just to put, you know, code comments. I would have just went into this text box probably and just said, hey, up here at the top, I would have done this. This is for the demo like that. But the nice thing about these comments, if you look, now you can see this little um, mark here, right? So this is telling me that screen one has a comment. If we go to screen two, it had one about Chewy editing the screen as well. So you have the ability to have comments show up in your app. Now, I will also say, you know, I could reply and be like, done. I guess I should have done this as Chewy. Um, so here we go, here's Chewy. Oh, back in, let's edit. I said, got it. So if he goes here, and so he could go right here and just say done, and then press the little button. And so his comments in there, and then oh, X out of this is me, kind of click out. Oh, there you go. So as fast as we can do it, right? So those do happen basically in real time, right? That that didn't require me saving, didn't require me refreshing, that just showed up. So the comments do fly pretty quick. That's a pro for comments. With comments here that you might have noticed, like I didn't at mention Chewy, like why not, right? It doesn't work. As far as I can tell, maybe Microsoft will tell me what I'm doing wrong, but I would say if I say at Chewy, right? There's Chewy the dog, that's him. And then I say, good boy. I just want to give Chewy a good boy. And then you press post reply, right? Whoop. It's going to freak out, right? So depending on its mood, I either will lock up my browser session completely or like lock up this pane. So I basically have to get out and back in to get it to work. 
Sometimes I'll get this. And it's like, hey, these people don't have access. You just saw Chewy leave a comment. You saw Chewy edit the app. Chewy has access, but whatever, right? So then we'll say share and notify, and I just get something went wrong. This happens whether I'm doing it for someone that already has access. Like, Cat doesn't have access to the app. I tried the same thing. I get the same weird experience. I have had zero luck with app mentioning. So maybe when Microsoft watches this, they will call me up and tell me how to fix it. But as of right now, I don't think app mentioning works at all. Um, so hopefully if you have a different you know, experience, leave it below. Or if you just think I'm great for telling you things that don't work, leave me a like. I know. Okay. So anyway, that is the downside of this is the at stuff doesn't work. Like I found it's different experiences too. Like, so for me, at least it kind of fails cleanly. Usually if I go over here and be like, hey, Chewy says, hey, I want to add a message to Shane, right? Hi, dad. And so then Chewy does this. Anyway, I've waited like 30 seconds. You can see like that little message popped up in there that I don't have access. I'm the one that created the app. I have access. And it's like freaked out. So this is one of those scenarios now where I just have to get all the way out and back in because the comment pane is just angry at life at this point. So you can see like the little X is grayed out. Like it, it's mad. So comments were, I am not using them, but if you do use them, just don't at mention someone or figure out how it works. It doesn't work for me. Next up, let's switch back over as me and let's talk about the host feature. Okay, so the host feature, this is a new object inside of Power Apps. So on the screen here, if we say insert a label, you can now type in host and then do a dot. And so we've got access to the browser user agent, the OS type, the session ID, and the tenant ID. So a lot of people have asked for IP address. I don't know why they didn't give it to us, but you know, we got some things. This was progress. So this, you can see like there's my browser stuff. Actually, we switched to screen three. I mean, screen one. And so here you can see that I went ahead and pulled in all of these um, pieces just like that. But so you can see, look, there's a browser user agent. So like, are you using it in a browser, using the Power Apps app where you're using it? OS type is Windows, come on my local machine, my session ID. So that's the instance, like if you were ever troubleshooting, like you're like, hey, I have this bug. And Marshall's like, what's your session ID? That's it. Tenant ID, that's kind of, you know, unique for my whole tenant, but it would not change from app to app. So those are the different things that you can get from host right now. And like, I want you to see, so here's me, the same thing, same screen opened up on my iPhone. So you can see that it's very similar. You can see I'm running o um, iOS 16.5 there, um, you know, and this, the different IDs there. So this is what you're going to be able to get exposure to. I have not found a use for it yet. I, the only thing I could come up with is if maybe you were trying to code around, like we know that sometimes some of those like, evil Samsung Android phones, you just have some weird peculiar bugs. So maybe if you're trying to code something for one of those, you want to know, or you could maybe use this and be like, hey, if their window, if their type is Windows, you know it's in a browser. And so like you wouldn't be able to use load data and save data the same way that you use load data and save data on an iOS or Android, right? Maybe some of those type of uh, things are, you know, being used in your decision making. I don't know. I, I don't have an actual scenario where I want to use this or have used it, but I wanted you to know it was there. And speaking of things, I wanted you to know they're there. Remember, go to training.powerapps901.com, right? If you're enjoying this, you would probably enjoy some of my proper training classes. We have live training classes. We have on-demand training classes. We have Power Platform University, a six-month immersive program with mentors and class projects and all types of like proper training. It's crazy. Go check it all out. Now, there's two things left here. Uh, so one, the next one here, this is a little bit of a change that has upset a few people. But so if you have a bunch of variables, right? So I just made a button to create me some variables and some collections. So now in order to, if you want to view those directly, like I would typically just go here to var global and be like, hey, what do you got? Oh, you're blank right now. We haven't pressed this button. Let's press the button. Hold down the alt key and press the button. But now we can see that like what's in there, the data type. Uh, same thing, my collection. And so I could kind of expand this out, see what's going on, right? That's typically how I look at variables and collections. So this next change has never affected me. But it used to be you could go to the view menu and then view them and kind of had a screen that we'd had for the last five years. They finally updated it. So if you look over here on the left, you've got variables. It should actually say variables and collections, but it's too big to write. And so here you can look at and say, all right, well, like global variables. All right, you have one called var global. It's a text. It's currently set to high mom. Um, and then if you go here, you go to definitions. So this is all the places that you are directly um, setting it, right? So think of this is all the places that you're setting the variable. Uses, these are places that you're using it. 
A direct use, like we have here in screen three labeled to text, if we click on it, it'll take us there, is we've set the text property to be var global. Right? We are directly referencing that variable in this code. Right? That's the most common thing. Indirect uses, if you've ever wondered, what those are is in this case, you can see that I said, hey, if label to text equals hi mom, then write the word yes here, if not no. So Power Apps is saying, all right, you want me to look at label two dot text? Well, label two dot text is that variable. So that's an indirect use of the variable. This is a Power Apps showing off how smart it is. It understands two steps away that you're using that variable. So indirect use is not as big of a deal, but I wanted to, it's a little confusing for newbies what that is. So that's what that is. So we have the same thing. That's global variables, context variables works exactly the same way. Component variables would be the same way as well if we had any of those. Collections, this is one people get miffed at, and I don't know why, but I know that they do. Like if we click on cool stuff here, like if you click, nothing really happens, the expanders don't work, but if you click here and click the ellipses and then say view table, you get a pop-up, and now I can scroll through and I can see all my 100 rows. There's 100. Or I can say cold employees, and so it's showing me that table. Now it is a little goofy, I'll scroll back up. Oh, scrolling up was tough. Um, I don't know if people get mad because maybe the, the column headers doesn't freeze. Maybe that's the thing that upsets people. I forget. But here you can see like age is 29. Like that makes total sense. But like if we go look at um, favorite color, that little symbol is telling me that this is a record being stored inside that field, right? Not super obvious, but that's what it is. And so if you click on it, then it would show you the value of blue. Like, like that's the way I would expect that to work. Um, but it is a little bit of a clunky experience because that doesn't really make sense that that's a record to me. Um, and then the back to, to go backwards is hidden over here in plain sight, keeping their proud tradition of hiding things. I also probably don't really care for the fact that the rows are so tall, but it's just trying to show me all this data. So I get why the rows are so tall, but those should probably be truncated. I don't know. Anyway, this is the new experience for finding them. Love it, hate it. I don't care. I almost never, ever use it. I am almost always going over here. And, you know, if I want to know what's in my particular variable, oh, take me back. See, now I'm lost. I like to be in the tree view. I get lost when I'm not in the tree view, right? I'm just back over here being like, what's in var context? Oh, yeah, it says, hi, Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Um, so that is how that works. And if I want to figure out where hi, Stacy or var context was being used, I just say copy, and then I'd use the little find and replace here. There you go. Now, while we're talking about controls, I did do a video recently on the new custom or the new modern controls, or I put a link up there. I'm not going to do that in this particular video, but it was worth mentioning because you might be interested in those. Those are newer. Also, I guess while we're plugging videos, there's also a new template for galleries. Right? Like that was a change, but that change was enough that I kind of got put into a video. So it's up there. Last thing, and this is probably the change they made the longest ago, so you've probably already ran into it. But say that if I go back to the tree view. I wanted to edit the color of this button, right? I'm gonna go here. And so if I want to set it to green, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go here to fill. I'm not gonna use that. And I want to, I just want to type in green. This worked for the last five years. A couple months ago, they took this away from us. Ah! Now what you have to do if you're like, but Shane, I know green's a thing. You're right. But all of these objects now, you've always got to be more explicit. So you gotta say color dot. And now there's green. Okay? So if you're having any problems in your apps or like, you know, if you're like me, you got muscle memory, I'm just typing the word green, it's now color.green. The good news, if you have existing apps, they fix this, they auto replaced all your code everywhere, except in your comments. If you had commented out, they didn't fix it, but all of your working code, they fix so all the green should become color.green. So you shouldn't have to do anything with this. This just is one of those ones that challenges people with, with strong muscle memory. If you're like, Shane, I don't care. Great then you are not me, so congrats. So that's what I've got for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this kind of quick-ish overview, right? Like I think that whole multi-editor thing, there's so many little facets, right? We spent a little extra time there. The rest of these features are just nice to know things, I think, but hopefully they helped you. If you got questions, comments, leave them below. Remember if you want to take training with me, I like that. I like you liking the video, do. And of course we always do full on consulting here at Power Apps 911. So with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.